Stay tuned for Butler on Business, coming up next on the Liberty Express. Jason, would you please introduce Fred to the listeners? Alan, we're joined on the phone now by Fred McMahon. He's the Vice President of International Research at the Fraser Institute and Director of the Center for Trade and Globalization Studies. The Fraser Institute measures and studies the impact of competitive markets and government interventions on individuals and societies around the world. Fred, Mr. welcome to the show. Thanks. It's a great pleasure to be on an Atlanta show, one of my favorite cities. Uh, now, where are you right now? I'm in Vancouver at the moment. Oh, wonderful town. Uh, it is, except damp and rainy, which it seems to be about 353 days of the year. Fred, we certainly appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. I wanted to talk about the Fraser Institute's Economic Freedom of the World Project. And before we get into that, though... Um, Economic freedom, it, it really sounds like a simple concept, but I still think there's a lot of confusion out there. Can you maybe explain to our listeners what exactly is economic freedom and maybe touch on the difference between claim freedoms and real freedoms? Uh, sure. Uh, economic freedom, you're quite right. It, it's simple, and when you put it in the way I'm about to, I think it's easy to grasp, and that is simply the ability of individuals and families to make their own uh, economic uh, choices free of government interference uh, or free of interference from any quarter, like uh, monopoly, crony capitalism, whatever. Uh, claim freedom um, is not really uh, a freedom. It's the expropriation of the term freedom for something very different. A claim freedom is like the freedom to have uh, a job. Well, that's not a freedom uh, because you're compelling somebody else to give you a job. You're free to look for a job. You're free to negotiate a job. But you don't have an automatic claim to a job. So for this project, the Economic Freedom of the World Project, what exactly were you guys hoping to accomplish in analyzing the economic freedoms of nations around the world? Um, Milton Friedman long claimed that uh, nations that were economically free would produce better lives for their citizens. But when he made that claim, there was no measure of economic freedom, no way to determine whether his claim was true. So uh, Milton Friedman and Mike Walker, then head of the Fraser Institute, got together with Rose Friedman and established this project so you could actually get a measure of economic freedom and see what the consequences were for people. So what were some of the factors that went into your calculation as you're looking into um, various levels of economic freedom for nations around the world? Uh, sure. We look at the size of government. Uh, when government expropriates uh, your property through taxes, it reduces uh, your economic room to maneuver. In other words, it reduces your freedom. Freedom to trade, you should be able to buy and sell from anybody in the U.S. or anybody around the world, for that matter. Uh, regulations, you, do, you know, uh, where there are regulations, there are blocks on your economic freedom. Sound money, uh, inflation uh, can tax away your savings every bit uh, as easily as, uh, as taxation can. Well, what, were, what were, I guess, some of the, the findings or results from this? How do economic freedoms impact some of the other indicators of well-being, maybe life expectancy or even standards of living for some of the poorest members of society? Uh, the economic freedom actually doesn't much change the distribution of wealth in society. In other words, the poorest 10% receive about the same amount of national income in an economically free society as they do in a non-free society. But economic freedom generates so much growth, uh, so much economic activity, that that share of the national income comes to uh, almost $10,000 per person amongst the poorest 10% in the freest nations. The poorest 10%, however, in the least free nations um, uh, have only an income of around $1,000 a year. Huge difference. In many other categories, too. Uh, people in economically free nations live about 20 years longer than those uh, in non-economically free nations. Uh, uh, Education achievement is far more equal between boys and girls in economically free nations than in non-economically free nations. Uh, pollution is lower in economically free nations than non-economically free nations, uh, in, uh, in large part because of more efficient ways of uh, production. Um, I, I could go on, but you probably want me to stop at some point. No, Fred, let me ask you, uh, there was a, a group that published us as being in the mostly free nations now, that we were fallen out of the group of the freest of the nations. Do you agree with that assessment? Well, our report uses only hard data. 
Uh, that makes it objective. It's the reason why our report is mostly used by uh, researchers. You know, there are not a few uh, guys and gals sitting in a smoky room determining, you know, kind of throwing darts. But that also means that since we can only use hard data, the most recent data available globally is two years uh, old. Um, in our last report, the United States was holding its own, though slipping somewhat. Uh, however, we do expect that when we have the hard data, uh, we will see more slippage uh, in the United States. Uh, you know, uh, you've been sp <laughs> spending like wild, something that started under Bush and continued under Obama. Uh, the regulatory system is getting more clogged uh, up. Uh, so it makes sense to believe that the United States is, 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 is going down the ladder. Well, with you up there in Canada, the one that's the bright spot, I'd say, in this hemisphere, y'all cut your spending. From, what, 17% of GDP down to 11%. You actually went the austerity route, what, seven, eight years ago. So you're in the middle of an economic expansion, and you're creating real jobs. Yeah. By the way, let me compliment you on uh, your, your research, uh, uh, not only on your data, but most uh, folks don't uh, know what claim freedoms are and have never heard of them. No, Canada was really lucky, and it's what I do to call uh, shape-shifting politicians. Um, the politician who created this great turnaround in Canada, a fellow named Jean Chrétien, uh, appeared to come from the left side of his own Liberal Party. His uh, uh, rhetoric was leftist and often very unfortunately uh, anti-American. Uh, and yet, while well, he was fooling uh, most of the lefties and, frankly, uh, most of the people who believe in free markets in Canada into believing he was a lefty, he was dramatically slashing government spending, reforming the tax system and cutting taxes. And that's the reason Canada right now is doing a whole bunch better than the United States. Well, the other thing, y'all didn't bail out any banks. You didn't have any stimulus programs. I mean, you did everything exactly opposite as a nation that we've done here in the United States. And as a result, we have, I'd almost call it a Canadian economic miracle. <laughs> and your biggest concern is that we're, you know, we're borders. We're bordering countries. And I hope we don't pull y'all into this abyss with us. Well, you know, when Canada was following leftist policies, policies far uh, to the left of the United States, the United States was Canada's engine of, of growth. Uh, we uh, uh, managed to keep selling to you no matter how bad our policies were. Um, but when, in our current recovery, you know, it, it's almost unheard of for the Canadian unemployment rate to be below the U.S. rate, for the Canadian dollar to be above the U.S. dollar. Uh, and our markets are diversifying because uh, our economy um, is in better shape due to good policies, and we're actually less dependent on the United States now, as you can tell, simply because we're doing so well. Well, Fred, one of the, I guess, more startling observations that I, I saw at reading through the most recent report that you guys put out was that in recent years, we've actually seen the first real retreat for global economic freedom in, in decades. Is that a trend that you expect, I guess, to continue? Um, yes, I do, uh, but I'm hoping that it will continue in a minor way. Uh, when the global financial crisis and recession first hit, uh, politicians tended on the whole to act surprisingly well. Uh, they beat off the protectionist fever, one of the things uh, that turned uh, what should have been the Great Recession of 1929 into the Great Depression, um, you know, throwing up trade barriers. They beat off that. Countries more or less acted fiscally uh, responsible. Uh, but, you know, what's going on now is kind of like a brush fire. You put it out in one place uh, in Europe and it pops up uh, someplace else. So I fear that though we've been acting more or less sensibly, not as sensibly as I would like, but at least not destructively, I now fear that with all this going on, you are going to begin to see some real restrictions uh, on economic freedom, and that uh, has the potential of immensely damaging consequences. Well, Fred, we certainly appreciate you taking the time again to speak with us today. Fred McMahon, he's the vice president of international research at the Fraser Institute. The Fraser Institute is an independent, nonprofit research and educational organization. And I'd like to highlight and point out they do not accept government funding, government grants, and just depend solely on contributions from private individuals and organizations. So if you're interested in what the Fraser Institute has to say and in the information that they're putting out, I suggest you go to their website. And 
if you feel so inclined, contribute to the cause. Fred, we'd love to have you on again real soon. Marvelous. Uh, uh, you know, uh, John Kennedy once said Washington was a city of uh, northern charm and southern efficiency. I've often thought of Atlanta as the city of southern charm and northern efficiency. Thank you very much. We look forward to having you on again. This is Alan Butler, Butler on Business, and we'll be back in a couple minutes. 